To get to the place where the Nenets live, we had to return to the village of Karaul and then travel by a reindeer sleigh. This is the first time I am riding in a reindeer sleigh. It feels incredible. Another exciting thing is that I am going to speak to real native people of the Taimir tundra, reindeer herders. Who else but them can tell me about the legends and tales of the great river Yenisei? One and a half hours of the journey seem an age because riding through scrub in a rigid sled is like jumping from a springboard sitting on a stool. I have just arrived at a nomad camp and it looks like I am witnessing a very interesting ritual. I hope I will be told what is going on. Can you explain? What's there in that mug? Is it blood? Blood, yeah. Of a reindeer? A deer. I have just seen with my own eyes the Yaptoon family sacrificing one of their reindeer. Its blood was offered to the home idol so that it protects the kin. After the deity is fed, everybody, even children, must drink some sacrificial blood. It is prohibited to unwrap it. And a stranger must not touch it, right? Once a year, you know. Once a year? Well, in some cases, for example, if someone is sick, a reindeer is slaughtered, blood is smeared all over. But not only this, for example, fishing or hunting wild reindeer. It always helps in all things. Epochs flew like an instant against the background of these motionless expanses and the Nenets, who have been grazing reindeer for a thousand years here. Forty people live in this camp three kin families, the Yaptun, the Voyenga, and the Yari. Cell phones and snowmobiles are the only tools provided by modern civilization. Like everyone else, Yuri Yaptun could move to the city, but for those born in the tundra, nomad life is a calling. When I spend three days in town or a village, I want to go back to the tundra, and I can do nothing about it. Thousands of families and half a million of reindeer are now nomadizing throughout the vast expanses from the Kola Peninsula to Taimir. This long-standing lifestyle could not be changed even at the beginning of the 20th century, when the free Nenets people were driven to collective farms and shamans were prosecuted like criminals. What happened to them? During the revolution, they were all imprisoned, taken to Krasnoyarsk. They froze to death there. Storytellers suffered the same fate. I was told that the only person I could ask about the Taimir dragon was Raisa Mikhailovna Yaptun, the oldest Nenets woman in this camp. Raisa Mikhailovna has 10 children and many grandchildren. She does not remember exactly. The old Nenets woman has been nomadizing in the Yenisei tundra since her parents married her off. When her husband was alive, Folklore expeditions came there to see him, to listen to and record some Nenets legends. I had a husband, Alexei Holhovich Yaptune. He knew about all the Nenets legends, about all the creatures you're looking for, and he was a knowledge keeper. I don't know anything, I never listened to him. My duty is to take care of the tent. I can't listen or gaze around. Seek those like my husband. Look for the storytellers. In a neighboring camp, we were lucky to find a woman storyteller of the Yenisei legends. 
I know this from my father. My father from his father. My grandfather from his father. For generations, our generation to another. Our kin has been that of storytellers. All neighbors, from small children to 100-year-old men and women, used to gather in her grandfather's tent. In silence, to the sound of the fire in the hearth, people listened to ancient legends. Apart from giants, uh, there are also creatures named uh, Shifertia in the Nenets mythology. According to a legend, they lived here before the Nenets, the Anets, and all those other ethnic um, groups came. And when people came, they left, they disappeared. They're supposed to be living in the hills, in their caves. When I was a child, my grandmother wouldn't let me wander away and look at those hills. She said, she'd tell us, you'll be kidnapped. And here it is at last, the ancient legend of the Lord of Yenisei, the Tymir dragon. It really exists and is still remembered. The king of water lives under the water and decides what to give to each family, what to put in their nets. So children were never allowed to, well, throw things into the water, like stones or rocks, so as not to irritate the king of water. The eternal frost has seized everything, but the tale of the ancient dragon has lasted for thousands of years here on the Yenisei.